Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Talking Development. Around the world, economic growth has slowed sharply. Developing countries in particular find themselves caught in an environment of tight financial conditions, low inflow of investment, persistent inflation and shrinking fiscal space at a time when needs are greater than ever. Some economists are talking about a lost decade as the outlook for growth is uncertain, if not daunting. Here is my take on this. We at the World Bank know that without growth, poverty can't be reduced and fiscal space for anything but short-term and urgent priorities gets squeezed. So we are laser focused on helping our clients develop and implement growth strategies. This includes achieving economies characterized by efficiency in the public sector, competitiveness across key sectors, private capital mobilization for financing, but also for innovation and skills development, and inevitably, a relentless focus on human capital formation with skills harnessed by the education system matching the needs of the job market. In the first in a series of discussions with our regional chief economist, I'm delighted to be joined by Andrew de Ballen, the World Bank's chief economist for Sub-Saharan Africa, and Roberta Gatti, the World Bank's chief economist for the Middle East and North Africa. Africa and the Middle East are among the parts of the world hardest hit by this global economic volatility, but they're also highly dynamic regions. Today, we're going to talk about what can drive growth in these regions. We will also talk about the role of chief economists and how the World Bank's analytical work can help governments make the policy changes needed to get back on the road to recovery. Andrew and Roberta, thank you so much for joining me here today. And I'm going to start with you, Roberta. MENA is a region uh, that's been really hard hit by Russia's war in Ukraine. And I think very early on, we heard really alarming news about food insecurity, rising prices, but also capital outflow. What are you doing leading the region now on analytics and diagnostics to try to set a course for recovery and for growth? What will it take MENA to grow? Thank you, Anna, for this excellent question. And for focusing on a region that, as you said, has as many challenges as it has opportunities. So let me try to unpack a little bit the answer to your question, thinking about two key prices. The first one is the price of oil, and we know that oil is very important to the Middle East and North Africa region. And the second one are interest rates. So when we look at growth, actually 2022 was a very bifurcated year for the region. Overall, the region grew very fast, uh, at par almost with South Asia, but the countries that grew the fastest were the oil exporting countries because of the bump in oil prices. However, when we look at the forecast for uh, 2023, this is where the global slowdown and the reigning uncertainty are really gonna hit our region. And I already saw a downgrade in growth uh, forecast from January to now, and we see them from all our country economies to the point that the forecast for 2023 is uh, about 2.2% growth in real GDP. The other thing that we really try to do is to sort of do reality checks on our economies. And this is where I wanted to talk about the second price uh, that is very important for our region and is the price of money over time. And those are the interest rates. So. Uh, high oil prices affected positively oil exporting economies and now we see the sort of downgrade uh, which is notwithstanding the cuts uh, that were driven by OPEC. High interest rates are uh, driving our concern, significant concern for oil importing countries. Countries such as Tunisia, Jordan or Egypt where public debt was already growing before the pandemic, it then grew during the pandemic, as you were correctly saying, fiscal policy sometimes needs to be there and needs to be counter-cyclical when economy is needed. But now these countries are facing problems of fiscal sustainability. And so they're really there uh, to really think about tough reforms. Thank you, Roberta. No magic bullet from what I can hear. Correct. And quite a bit of challenges that will push the region and potentially hold the region back. Interesting, challenging, but makes the work so important. Andrew, when I came into this job, one of the first uh, regional economic updates that I read was that one for Africa. And again, growth was a big topic. And it was very much about two big countries in the region, South Africa and Nigeria, having much lower growth 
turnout than had been hoped for. And the main reason for both countries seemed to be the energy sector. So what is the trajectory for the region when it comes to growth? And how important are these two countries for Africa's overall growth trajectory? And is energy really continuously a pivotal problem in the region to grow sustainably and, and in an inclusive manner? Thank you, Anna. Um, the two countries are very important for Africa's growth. Uh, and we can add Angola and Ethiopia for that matter. So these are the big economies and they, they, they take a big share of Africa's growth, uh, you know, 50, 60 percent of the GDP of the region. So if they're not doing well, the region as a whole will not be doing well. Three things that we've learned about growth in Africa in general. One is that traditionally it has not really been very high compared to other regions of the world that have actually had a lot of success in, in reducing poverty. So that's the first. Second, it hasn't been sustained over a long period of time, right? So you get these accelerations for a few decades or even a few years, and then either decline or stagnation for a long, long period of time, then recovery, and then stagnation, and so on and so on, right? So up and down, so it's not been sustained. And the third thing about the, the growth in Africa, uh, feature of growth in Africa is that the transmission mechanism, what I call the transmission mechanism, which is how much poverty reduction you get for a certain level of growth has been very low compared to other regions of the world that have had a lot more success, right? So, so in order to be able to actually have success and build a resilient economy and growth in Africa, we need to tackle all three of them. We need to raise the growth level, we need to sustain it over a long period of time, decades, and then we need to actually really improve the efficiency of the transmission mechanisms. Very interesting and insightful. And again, um, just illustrating what a comprehensive agenda it still is to pursue longer term stability in terms of growth. Precisely. You both, uh, I think, also highlight the issue of uh, too much uh, concentration for growth in one or two sectors, which also makes countries quite exposed to changes. Now I have a question for each of you. I'm going to start with Andrew this time, and it's specifically on the Evolution Roadmap, which is looking to transform the World Bank Group. Yeah. How do you see your role, you as Chief Economist for the region and your team of economists in your, in your, in your unit, what is your role to help the bank transform? Now, we think that there are two ways in which the World Bank can actually help uh, achieve those, those goals. One is to try and find some way to help African countries have agricultural transformation, because that's where most of the poor are, that's where most of the population actually earn their living. And in order to do that, we really need to get to the bottom of understanding water management. The second part is really to try and think about, in the non-farm sectors, how to increase jobs place where we, our knowledge is actually lacking is understanding, getting inside the enterprises and understanding what constrains them, uh, what kinds of um, value chains are they linked to, uh, what, what kinds of um, issues they, they, they confront on a day-to-day -day basis in order to be able to actually improve their efficiency and competitiveness. And again, there we really need to collect information around farms and enterprises to be able to help them uh, think about ways in which they can improve productivity. So that, for us, those are the two areas of focus on, on, on research, Thank to be able to yeah. transform. Thank you so much. Roberta, same question for you. How are you and your team contributing to transforming the bank through the Evolution Roadmap? Thank what do you, you want to do? Thank you, Anna. Well, let me just start with saying the pleasure that I have in seeing a renewed emphasis on knowledge and the role of knowledge in the Evolution Roadmap. If I think about the what, so the key themes where we're going to focus on, I think one will be very aligned with what Andrew was saying, which is going to be job creation. As a region, the Middle East and North Africa shares a demographic uh, outlook with Africa, which is also tremendous potential for the region. And so this will mean understanding better the role of the state and how to shape the role of the state as an enabler for growth in the region. The second part, the second what, I think it will have to do with thinking about the green, transition, the green transition. So understanding the diversification process and especially understanding the trade-offs that will come and how these trade-offs along the 
green transition path will affect the most uh, disadvantage. If you were to ask me about the how, I really think that we as offices of chief economists and the bank overall can be a trusted partner in enabling discussions with data, with sound economic diagnostics, with our clients, but also with the civil society around us and with the academia. So for me, it's like being a little bit of a bridge, and I hope that that bridge will help those discussions to happen for the welfare of all. Wonderful. Fascinating to, to hear from both of you on this, and, and thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you so much for checking us out again at Talking Development. I hope you enjoyed this and learned a bit. I sure did. And I look forward to seeing you again at the next episode of Talking Development.